The coach will get started shortly. Once again, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. All right, we'll get started with Ira Winderman. Go ahead, Ira. Uh, Eric, the, the way it obviously changed there in the fourth quarter, was it something you felt you guys didn't do, something they did, and what do you take out of the way that the game closed? Thank you. There was a couple of second opportunity possessions uh, that they had um, offensively, you know, throughout, you know, the course of the game when we just obviously were not getting enough shots on goal. Uh, wasn't your typical um, offensive ball and body movement that, that you're accustomed to seeing with us and um, we needed a whole lot more singles and easy plays uh, just to get everybody in rhythm uh, and, and feeling a part of it offensively uh, and then defensively you know like I said those second uh, opportunities um, you know Fournier broke free a, a couple times uh, and they put us away from there. And this obviously was the first time you've been together in game conditions as a group with Jimmy coming back. You told us throughout camp, Jimmy and Bam lead the way. They're your guys. Your thoughts on their two efforts and what they accomplished in the opener together. Thank you. I mean, look, they're, they're our leaders. Uh, I mean, they're both hitting the deck and hitting the floor for loose balls uh, in game one, like they would in, in game six, you know, of the finals. Um, and that, that's that's just you know leading by example. All right, up next we have Anthony Chang with the Miami Herald. Go ahead. Hey, so obviously turnovers are costly, but to start the season with 22 turnovers, was it a combination of what Orlando was doing and just taking care of the ball? Yeah. You know, for sure, you have to give Orlando credit. Uh, you know, they are active, they are long and uh, and disruptive. You know, they're top five in steals last year. They've been doing the same thing in, in the short preseason. Um, so you have to be very precise. Um, your spacing has to be great. And, um, you know, you have to be willing to work the offense and sometimes make the easy play and get it to the second side and, uh, and execute from there. And then on the offensive end, you, you guys averaged, what, 35, 36 threes a game last yeah. season. Take 23s tonight. Was it a result of the turnovers? Was it the way Orlando was defending you guys at the line? I think oh, there's a lot of different factors. One, uh, empty possessions. Uh, two, we didn't get the necessary ball movement. Um, you know, working our offense to be able to get what we wanted. Uh, we were pretty much a, a first trigger team tonight, you know, trying to get everything uh, on that first action. Uh, and Orlando's too good of a defensive team to do that, you know, consistently over the course of the game. Um, and then, you know, you know, thirdly, they're a good defensive team. You know, they're, they've... All right, Ethan Solnick here, uh, back on you know, five on the floor. Greg Savannah, Alice, starts to the Miami Heat. And, and, who's uh, their uh, open? All right, up next we have David Romero with Locked on Heat. Go ahead, David. Coach, how would you assess Tyler's start? It looked like he was uh, having some trouble handling the ball and maybe was forcing some of the passes there. Did you notice anything particular, or would you just chalk it up to Orlando's defense? Well, basically what I just commented, those three things. Cool. Uh, next, we have uh, Ira Winterman again. Go ahead. All right, Eric again, um, Goron and how he came back. And it clear, uh, he looked himself. It, it looked like he was ready to go. Can you also, also take us through your thoughts on the lineup? Of, of Is this the way you feel more comfortable with him as a reserve during the regular season? And also, if you don't mind your thoughts, please, on Mo Harkless opening at the four. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I thought Mo's uh, defensive activity, you know, during his some of his minutes was really good, uh, you know, uh, and I think it, it's a matter of getting him in better game condition and, and get him, getting him in Miami Heat condition uh, to be able to sustain that activity um, for longer periods of time. But there, there's definitely some things we can build on uh, there. Um, yeah, Gorn, Gorn looked great. Yeah, he's had a couple practices, you know, like that. Um, and then I thought he, his minutes in the trial game were very good uh, as well. Um, I like this. You know, uh, bringing him off the bench. Uh, it's a great luxury to have an all-star 
uh, and somebody that can run your offense and be able to, you know, in theory, um, finish your quarters pretty strong um, and we're able to protect um, each other from, you know, him getting too many minutes and, and getting too worn down as the season goes on. All right, up next we have Tim Reynolds. Go ahead, Tim. A little bit ago, I'm curious if 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 that's been an issue when you guys are upstairs. When you guys are, I know you've been going hard in practice. How has the spacing looked there, or was does that? Does yeah, that, you know what's disappointing about it, Tim, is uh, two days ago we had a, a fantastic offensive practice. The ball was really popping; it was moving. Uh, it looked exactly opposite of what you saw tonight. Uh, tonight, that wasn't winning offensive basketball, obviously, with mistakes. Um, and we just did not work, uh, you know, our, our triggers and our offense well enough and sharing it and, and, and seeing what would happen if it, if it got to the, to the weak side. Um, but we've had <laughs> the overwhelming majority of our practices, the ball really moved. So, you know, that... I was disappointed that it didn't carry over to the to the, the game tonight. Thanks, Eric. All right, thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks.